Oh, it's slowing down on me. It's recording. All right. Marina, what questions do you have? Um, I only have two E. Two questions. Okay, we'll make the most of this. Which which uh, document should we be looking at? Uh, the practice test. It's two E. Two E. All right. Um... And that one was about, uh, describe what happens to the mass of each electrode. Is that the question? Um, how many minutes would it take for a clamp 45.3? Oh. Um, or the test, the actual test. The actual test, okay. No problem. I can bring that up. Okay, so can you see that right there? Yeah. Okay, so this is my key. So what they did is um, you had the 45.30 grams of solid nickel. So you know it's just going to be nickel. And from this, looking at this formula, we have to memorize our polyatomic ions. You know that SO4 is a 2 minus charge which means that nickel is a two plus charge. When we start with the grams, we know that the current is 1.87 amps. Um, you're starting with, you need to figure out that, because normally we go two grams, but this time we're given grams, so we're actually working backwards. Like they, they'll say, oh, normally you, you go for 10 minutes with two amps, you know, how much is being plated? Um, so this one, you're, you're doing the reverse, which means that you start with the mass and you have to divide by the molar mass to get the number of moles. Then in your bridge, after you get moles, you got to figure out how many moles of electrons were transferred. So that's why the two is on top. Remember, if we're canceling the units, we've got to be able to cancel all these units at the end. So we, we did, we start with grams, which means grams have to be on the bottom of the next step and we're converting to moles, then the bottom of the next step is moles of the metal and how many electrons it transferred, which was two. And now that we have moles of electrons, for every one mole of electron, that would be like one Faraday. So the, the step that maybe they skipped in the middle, which you don't necessarily have to do either, but for every one mole of electron, you have one Faraday. For every one Faraday, you have 96,500 Coulombs. And for amps, if you remember, amps are coulombs times seconds. So that means that if we had coulombs here, we're trying to get to minutes, we have to divide by the number of amps, or we divide by basically coulombs, and that was in one second, and there were 60 seconds in one minute. So um, you are you are, um, again, you're working backwards. Normally we would start with minutes and go forward, but, but we're, we're working back. So that's how you would get to the 1,330 minutes. Um, if I were to look at the, oh, you got the, okay. So if I were to look at the retake, I would say that there is, there is one question in the multiple choice that you're gonna have to answer. And there is one question in the free response that you're going to have to answer. Stuff like this? Yes. Okay. Now, they could go either way, remember. They could start with the minutes or they could start with the grams. So you should be able to go backwards or forwards with that. Okay. Okay. And welcome, Amanda. I'm glad you could join us. Hi. <laughs> so um, if hopefully you caught that. We just did number two. Uh, so we're looking at the unit test, number two, section E. Uh, I think you probably saw that, so you know where we were going. Yeah, I also had a question about that, too, so that worked out. Oh, good. Okay. Um, so let me ask you both, then. How did you do with number 10 on the multiple choice. 
I got it wrong. I got it wrong. And so, um, did you figure out why you got it wrong? Yeah. Okay. So that one is going the other direction where it starts with amps and minutes. Um, but you could, do you think you can do that question now? Yeah, it was the mole of the electrons that I messed up on. Oh yes. Cause it, it was because you were looking for another three, but the, like there were, yeah. since there were two threes up top here, the three amps and the three minutes, and then there were three on the bottom. So the two threes canceled out. That was, yeah, that was really tricky. That was kind of mean. Yeah. But there's another question like that on the multiple choice again. So you've got to be ready for it. I, I don't know if necessarily they're going to cancel out like that, but just be ready to do a problem like that. If you guys know how to set it up, then you should be okay. Okay. So Marina, you said you had a second question. Oh, the two, oh, you just had one question that was number two, I gotcha. Well, Amanda, do you have a question? Um, I only have one other one that's blank, and I'm not, one D. One D on the free response? Yeah, that's only another one I haven't done for my correction, so. And that one's what happens to the mass of each electrode as the cell operates? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so, for example, if you look up and look at A, it says that the half reaction at the anode. So this right here, this reaction is the oxidation half reaction. So um, this lead solid is giving you the lead ion. It's it's because it's losing electrons, and so if you look at the picture, the lead is the electrons are coming out of the electrode and across to the X electrode, which we determine later to be copper. So it's losing electrons. And so as it's doing that, metal ions are become, or metal atoms are becoming metal ions and coming off of the electrode. So that means that the lead is the one, sorry, the lead is the one that is decreasing in mass. So if you can pick that up, then you know automatically that the other electrode is the one that's gaining mass because its ions are going from the whatever they are as an ion to a to an atom on the electrode. Okay. Um, so there will be a question kind of like that in the free response. You're going to have to be able to identify, I mean a lot of it is like which one is the, the cathode and which one is the anode. Um, also thinking about, you know, maybe how the mass changes. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, so then my next question would be number two, A, B, and C. How did you guys do on those questions? Um, wait, on the free response? Yes. I got all three of those full credit. Oh, good. Okay. Wait, which one? Oh, wait. A, B, and C. A, B, and C on... I actually need that A, B, and then 1 and 2 of part B. So for C, I only get half credit. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Maybe we're looking at a different one. So the, so the unit test, uh, the one that... Can you guys see it on the screen right now? Oh, wait, that's number one. Never mind. Oops. No, I didn't do well on that. Okay. So when you're looking at when you're looking at the um, when you are looking at the um, what you have in solution. So this is aluminum bromide in solution. Um, you should be looking at that table. It'll provide you with values, and you've got to compare aluminum, the bromide and then water because it's in a solution, which means it's been dissolved in water. And this is an ionic compound that's in the solution. Now, if it had said molten, then you just would have had the bromide and the aluminum, but it was a solution, which means it was in water. So when you compare these, you're looking for the ones that, you know, of course, which one's gonna be the highest on the reduction potential, and that one, that one is being reduced. 
um, reduction is gain in electrons. And so looking at that, um, uh, you know that the bromide cannot gain any more electrons. It's already there. So, because it's already, I'm sorry, it's already a negative ion. So it's, it, you cannot um, reduce it any further. And, and I keep looking at B because I think B is the one that kind of trips everybody up. So the only two you had to compare were aluminum and water. And at that point, which one is higher of the two, that one is the one that becomes the, the reduction. Um, I wonder, you know what I should do? I wonder if I can have, find a quick table to be able to, care. let's see, AP chemistry, reduction, potential table. Oh, here we do, we have one. Okay, uh, let me... Okay, I'm gonna share the document real quick. Right. Um, oops, I made it small. I don't wanna do that. Or minimized, not really small is it? Okay. Can you guys see this standard reduction potential table right here? No. no. It's so pretty, not. is it pretty small? So I can make it a little bit bigger. Okay. So looking at this, you know that the bromide right here, like, so here's bromide kind of in the middle, but that's, and that's being reduced from the liquid bromine. So that's not possible because you're actually starting with the bromine negative. Okay. So that one's out because it's not going to be reduced. Um, so then you have to compare aluminum and water and we look here and we see that water when it's being reduced is negative 0.83 and it's higher than aluminum when it's reduced at negative 1.66. So that is why you choose water. So can you guys, um, you know, you're, you're looking at it to see, you know, which way and, and, and well, anyways, I'm backing, I'm going too far. Um, so that's how you would find B. Now the other one was which one is being oxidized uh, so that you're looking at to see which one is going to have the, the lowest kind of, if you had to, to reverse it and um, looking at the, the test, um, you're going from, from bromine, again, you're comparing bromine, aluminum, and water, and aluminum can't be oxidized. Aluminum can't lose any more electrons. So even though aluminum's way down here, you know, negative 1.66, it, it would be positive 1.66. Aluminum cannot be oxidized any further. So we can't do that one because we're starting with the ion, which means we're comparing water and the bromide. <clears throat> and the bromide is a, uh, a 1.07 and the water is a 0 0.83 if we had to, to, to reverse it. Actually, here it is. I'm sorry. The, the water, if we had to reverse it, actually, the water is a 1.23 because we're being oxidized, so we're going the other direction. So can you see this reaction right here that I've highlighted? So that one, if you reverse that one to be oxidized, it's going to be negative 1.23, and the bromide is negative 1.07, and so um, you're going to end up picking the bromide because it's, it's higher as far as compared to those two. Um, so, so that's what, so you, you're comparing those, those two equations and because they both have two electrons, you know that, um, when you get down into the D part, let me, let me go back to the test for a second. I'm going to guess that because you guys, um, because you didn't do well on A, B, and C that you probably didn't get all of D. For C, I got the point, and then for D, I got two out of the three. Points. Oh, two out of three is good. Well, that's good. So, um, which means that you probably applied it correctly, but you had the wrong information to begin with, and it kind of messed you up. Yeah, you crossed out one of my numbers, and I think it was the moles. Right, the moles of electrons. Okay, because yeah. you were supposed to have, you were getting one point for, for the, the number of moles being correct. And it should correspond to what you did in the previous questions, but so it, you did the E of the cell, 
which was the reduction at the cathode minus the reduction at the anode. So it would have been the negative 0.83 minus negative 1.07. And um, oh, no, no, they reversed that one. It would have been negative, negative 0.83 minus 1.07 because it would have been positive because it was reversed. Uh, and that would give you the negative 1.90. So that gives you the voltage for E naught. Faraday's constant is the same, 96,500. And then the number of electrons would be two because looking at the two electrons, they would cancel out. You had two electrons being um, compared in the bromide half reaction and you had two electrons in the water half reaction. Um, and you know that if they had been other numbers, like if they had been um, a two and a three, like some people had done, then the common number two times three would be six that, would, that they both go into. Um, so hopefully hopefully that makes some sense. Um, uh, do you guys understand that? That, it, that if, if let's say this had been aluminum because it transferred three electrons and that can't transfer two electrons, you want the electrons to cancel out on each side, which means you've got to multiply the top reaction by three and the bottom reaction by two and you would have six electrons being transferred, and that means that N would be a six. I it would be six? It, it, if, if the aluminum had been used. Does that make sense? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's, that's something you have to look at when, you're, when you are writing those half reactions together and, and writing the net half, when you get to the net ionic, that's what has to happen. You're going to have a couple net ionic equations on the test, on the retake. Um, so make sure that you, you, you add them up correctly. All right. Are there other questions? Anything come up while we were talking? I just need to study. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. Um, are there going to be stuff like uh, 2E? Um, you mean this one right here, the the plating out the 45.3 grams? Yeah, because I'm not, I'm not good at those. Um, yes, there are, <laughs> there are a couple questions like this. One of them multiple choice and one of the free response. Let me do this. Let's um, let's share. Okay. So, and let me let me see if I can write down like a like a basic formula. So when you are doing when this is the plating question for electrolysis. Okay, and normally the one on the test was backwards, which is totally fair game, but normally they give you the amps and the minutes. And they give you the amps and minutes to start off with. Okay. So when they do this, um, you are going to need to, let me see if I can find, yeah, I'm just going to end up, I think I'm just going to end up um, drawing up like a little template. I'm not going to actually do a problem. Okay. So when you do this, you you really want to start off with your amps. Or, or you could, you know what, it doesn't really matter. You can start off with the minutes, you can start off with the amps. Let's start off with minutes. Maybe that's the easiest one. Okay. So because that last question ended with minutes, so that way you can look at it going backwards. So if you start with minutes, okay, and you're gonna make this long bridge, okay? You start with minutes, and let me make this a little finer, okay? So for every one minute, because you know that they need to cancel out, you're gonna have 60 seconds. So those are gonna to multiply together, okay? And then, um, when you're doing that, you're going to end up, so your minutes cancel out, you've got seconds on top, okay? Um, you're going to want to throw in 
the amps at some point because you need amps times seconds to end up being equal to coulombs, okay? Because that's part of the, the conversion. Um, so what you're gonna have is, um, uh, I'm blanking all of a sudden, I'm sorry. So you have, like, let's say you have, um, you have this, the amps on top because you're trying to get to amps. So you would have the, um, the seconds on the bottom. Okay. And then because you're doing the amps, the way that they work, amps are Coulombs times seconds. You've got to have put your 96,000 500 coulombs on bottom down here, okay? And that's equal to one Faraday. And then one Faraday is one mole of electrons. And I wish my writing was smaller, maybe we could fit it all in, but, so to continue with that, if we just pick up right here and we have the one Faraday is the one mole of electrons, okay? And then however many moles of electrons from your metal, okay, are then gonna be equal to one mole of the atoms of that metal. And then one mole of the metal gives you so many grams in the molar mass of the metal. All right, molar mass up here, okay? So when this is all gets said and done, you end up these minutes, let me change it to like red so we can see the, oops. Huh, no, I don't want the eraser, what happened? Oh, there we go. Okay. So then your minutes cancel out with the minutes. The seconds cancel out with the seconds. The, so the Coulomb seconds up there, so that, which is fine, the Coulombs and seconds cancel out because of the Coulombs there, okay? Your Faradays cancel with your Faradays. Your mole of electrons cancels uh, with your, oh, it's over here again. So you get that mole of electrons cancels with the mole of electrons. Mole of the metal cancels with the mole of the metal, leaving you with the grams, whatever this equals, okay? Um, so with that being in mind, why don't I see if I can dig up a quick practice problem? What if nice? Okay, I've got one. Okay. Um, Provided I can get to it. I went to sciencepeak.net and found a problem. Okay. So this number six right here, the current in a given wire is 1.80 amps. How many coulombs, so this is gonna stop you short, you're not gonna go all the way to grams, but how many coulombs will pass a given point on the wire in 1.36 minutes? So. Given that, given that template I just gave you guys, can you figure out how many coulombs are going to pass? Why don't we do that right now? And I'll, I'll try to do it on my own too.
Are you guys starting with minutes? Okay. So, do you guys have an answer yet? Well, no. Because I don't know what to do for like the grams and stuff. For the okay. We don't know. We're not going that far. This so is just, just stopping. At, like the Faraday point, but then asking for it in coulombs. Okay, let me. Well, let me show you what I've got. Um, let's, do you want to let, is it still on your screen right now? Yeah. Okay, let's check it out. Yeah. Yay! It's E. Okay, let me, um, show you guys why. Good job, Marina. Um, the, so, what we had, or what I had, is I started with minutes, okay, and it was one, uh, 1.36 minutes. So I had to divide by one minute and multiply times 60 seconds and that gave us seconds. And then kind of this one second to give 1.80 amps. And that's where we stop actually because you can see the minutes cancel out and these seconds kind of cancel out but really it's about this second canceling out here leaving you with coulombs on the top. If you divide by 96,500 coulombs you're converting it to faradays or moles of electrons. And that's not what's asking for you. It's asking you to stop at coulombs. So that's it. 1.36 times 60 times 1.80. Okay. Does that make sense? Step too far. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, let's, let's do another one. I have another one that actually takes you the full bridge, which is similar to what you're gonna see in the test tomorrow. Uh, so let's go back to the sciencegeek.net and let's do number eight. Now we're starting with hours, so we have to do some additional conversion.
Would this be on free response or multiple choice? Um, actually, it could be on both. Um, what they would do on the multiple choice is that you would have to put all of them in a numerator and denominator, one giant fraction. In a and so they would just be looking for that. In the free response, they would actually be looking for the the actual number of grams. Okay, because I just wasn't sure whether or not to use my calculator. Oh yes, use your calculator, please. Okay. Okay, I got an answer, and it's a choice, so that's probably good. Okay, you guys are running a little bit faster than I am. Let me. So I have an answer to Marina. Do you have an answer? Yeah. And what do you guys get as an answer? Which number? Which letter? I got C. I got C. Hey, me too. Let's see. Hi. We're so smart. All right. Good job. Yay team. That makes me happy because I didn't know how to do those like at all. Okay. Well, good. Hopefully that will be good. About like minutes. Or like having to do with time and amps, like but I was starting with Faraday's or something like that. So wait, ask that question one more time. Um, will there be like problems where they're asking for like Faraday instead of like uh, like where we start with Faraday, not amps or time? Um I believe that there is. It would be like like possibly starting you in the middle. Okay. So let me share with you my um, my bamboo paper that I've been doing these problems on. Okay. So you guys can you guys can see the bamboo paper. Yeah. Okay. So the problem was all of this right here. Okay. So. They could say, you know what, we're going to start you with Faraday's right here. And say, you know, if we give you a certain number of Faraday's and go forward, you know, how many grams could be plated? Um, they could start with grams and go back to just find out the number of Faraday's or find out the number of Coulombs. Um, and they could go all the way back to number of seconds, minutes, or hours, but it's definitely fair game to to get it in the middle somewhere, uh, and and there is a there is a question on the test where, let's double check. They're they're you know they're gonna they're gonna start in the middle, or they're gonna end in the middle. Like maybe they only go as far as the moles of electrons. Maybe yeah, they could start with the hours or minutes and and go to the number of moles of electrons, or maybe they start with the the Faraday's and they go to the number of grams. So there is some middle stuff. So if you guys can get that template down in your head, then you can manipulate that template. You can go back and forth and work with it. And and if you go to the sciencegeek.net, uh, on the one that I opened up, the very first question has, uh, oh, the first question is starting with the number of amps and the kilograms of the aluminum it wants to know how long it would take, how many seconds that would take. So that's kind of going in reverse. Um, we did through eight. Let me see. Is there another? Um, I don't see another one that looks like that. But there, there could be some other questions that you could... So, so taking a look at that sciencegeek.net or going to Adrian Dingle's site and doing some of his electrochem pop-up questions, you'll get more practice with manipulations. Okay. 
Good. All right. Um, other questions? Um, you know, I do have a question for you guys. How did you guys do? Um, there was a question on here that they got a lot of people. Uh, that question. Can you guys see the test okay right now? Uh-huh. Okay. Um, question. I think it was really just question E2 on number one. I got it wrong. Yeah. Okay. So the point is, is if you change the concentration, um, what happens to your reaction? And so looking at this, so you, you spilled some Na2SO4 in the PB electrode resulting in the formation of a precipitate. So if you go back to A, you know that the PB2 plus ion is a product, which means that you are um, reacting with the product and removing product. So then the question is, what happens to the rate of the reaction if you remove product? Let me do a screen share of my bamboo tablet so we can talk about this. This is important. And you know what's so funny is we were just talking about this today in general chemistry. Um, I think because I think it's a hard, it's a hard problem. So we have reactant going to products. Can you see my bamboo tablet okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So this is what's happening. And if you suddenly start removing product, if product starts getting removed out, so you don't have as much product, the reactant can react more frequently. It's that whole thing with you know the collision theory, like things are not in the way, so more reactants can get to each other, so you're gonna have more reactions, so it's gonna start reacting faster because you've removed product. So if it starts moving factor, faster, and one of the products of the reaction is electrons, more electrons are gonna be passed, resulting in a higher voltage for your cell. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Now, if you did something on the reactant side, if the ion was on the reactant side and you precipitated it out, and so you started removing reactant, it's pulling against the arrow. It's pulling against the reaction, so it's actually going to slow it down. So not as many electrons are being produced, so the voltage decreases. Does that make sense? Only if like it, it doesn't um, spill. If it oh, if it doesn't spill. Wait, which one was the what was the second? This is the one where if 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 there was a spill E two if something was spilled and you got a precipitate in one of the compartments like so here let me show you actually what this should look like if this was, um, oops, PB plus Cu two plus goes to. PB2 plus plus Cu, okay? So there's your reaction. So if, if you start removing, um, if you start removing the PB2 plus for precipitation, that's gonna pull the reaction to the right. It's gonna, if this starts getting removed, it's gonna pull the reaction to the right, increasing the number of electrons, which is going to, you know, cause you to have a higher voltage. If, if the Cu2 plus got precipitated and it started getting removed, then it's not gonna be as strong going to the right. The rate of the reaction decreases, so not as many electrons are produced. So it's going to decrease the voltage of the system. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So it's the same thing as let's say and that was with precipitation. But let's say that I ended up just dumping in a bunch of, of loose ions. So let's say I just add a whole bunch of Cu2 pluses here. 
So I start adding more Cu2 plus as well. If I add reactant, if I increase the concentration of the reactant, what happens to the rate of the reaction? Increases. Increases. So now we've got a whole bunch going this way. So now you're going to have, you're going to increase voltage. If I suddenly dump in a whole bunch of PB2 pluses, so now I've increased the concentration of the product, what's going to happen to the rate of the reaction? Decrease. Decrease. So now it's just a little arrow. So now your voltage is going to be less than it would be normally. The E of the cell decreases. Um, this is the concept that you guys need to understand. The quick and easy way to do it, but you're, if you had to calculate it, was E of cell equals E naught of cell minus um, RT, um, oh, I'm forgetting, is it, is it, I'm doing the Nernst equation. Is this natural log or log? Look at me, I can't even remember it. Um, do either of you remember it by chance? Or have it right there available by chance? If you don't, that's fine. I, I'm sure I will find it in a second. What's the uh, What's the Nernst equation? Was it in the first packet? Oh, good. Oh, it's log. Wait, but there's also natural log. There, there is. I think it's... If it's the RT over the NF... Okay. Natural log of Q. Natural log of Q. Okay. And Q, of course, is where it's products over reactants. And so... Um, it's, it's this concept of, if you, if you, you could use the Nernst equation to explain it. You can also explain it about, you know, with using collision theory or talking about reaction rates. Um, if you have, let's see, if you have a, um, if you have a situation, and this is, this is the whole idea with the, it, I don't know if you guys are, as familiar with natural logs. If you have natural log of a number that's less than one, it becomes negative. Okay? If it's less than one, it means there's more reactants than products, which means the E of the cell is going to increase because the negative, right? There's my, here, minus. You minus, or when you, you subtract a negative, this is because of the RT over NF times natural log of Q, and this is going to be negative. So minus a negative makes this positive. So if it's less than one, then it becomes positive, making the E of the cell higher. If it's greater than one, it's positive, which means you have more product than reactant. And so that's gonna be greater than one. So the E of your cell is gonna go down compared to the E not of the standard state. And so AP is moving away from you having to do it this way if they just provide the reaction, you know, somebody could say, well, the Ernst equation, and they would just plug it in, they would just give the answer. But now they were saying, uh, it would appear that, that if you could explain it conceptually, like, oh, well, if you increase the concentration of the reactant, it's going to, because of collision theory, it's going to make the reaction go faster, you're going to produce more electrons, which is going to increase the voltage and therefore e increase the E of the cell. Or we increase the concentration of the product, which gets in the way so there's not so the, the reactant molecules have a more difficult time colliding, fewer reactions, it means that the rate of the reaction is going to decrease, fewer electrons are passed, the voltage is lower, meaning the E of the cell is lower. Did you guys follow that explanation? Yes I did. Okay. That was good. I wanted it because that was a that was a frequently missed question on the test and there will be something like it on the retake and I think it would be good to talk about it.
Uh, all right. Are there any other questions? Um, is it going to be kind of similar to the original test? Um, there are some similarities, yes. Like, I think that, that there are similar similarities to the practice test and the unit test. Okay. To both of them. So just be familiar with with both of them and you should probably be fine. I will say this, the, the test questions, I haven't done it as frequently this year, but I try to keep a little guessing in the questions because um, we don't know exactly how AP will ask the questions each year. And if you guys are always used to being able to anticipate how the questions are asked, then you'll be caught by surprise when it comes time for the test when they ask questions in a, in a different format. So sometimes the questions I ask you are a different format um, primarily so that you guys can get used to seeing something different and how would you adapt to this new way of asking the question. Right. So some of the questions aren't exactly the same as what you've already seen but hopefully you'll still be able to apply your knowledge and, and get the right answer. Six thirty or six forty-five? Well, I would encourage six thirty. It's it's about as long as the last test. Let's see, I have ten multiple choice, and there are well, there's technically three free response, um, but the third free response is um, pretty short. Actually, it's only three parts. It's only three points total. So probably 6.30 then. Yeah, I would encourage 6.30. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, I'm sorry more people didn't show up. Sometimes with more questions, you're able to get more out of it, but... Um, Sometimes it's good just when there isn't, too, because then you can get your questions answered. That is an excellent point. Yeah, it goes both ways. <laughs> oh, hey, let me ask you guys another question, too. Um, when we come back from the break, like the teachers have a work day for meeting on Monday while you guys are at home, lucky dogs. But um, I've been asked to talk about hangouts with the other teachers. And is there anything that, um, like I think that the, the pros and the cons, anything you guys can comment on about hangouts that I should tell the other teachers? I like them. I think it's nice for review and you can ask questions like outside of class. True. I like those questions. They're helpful. Like, so, like sometimes you don't always want to go into plus or minus so you can like... Yeah. I don't know. That's a good point. And it's like after you've tried the work kind of. Mm -hmm. So it's like where sometimes if you give it to us in class it's like I haven't done it yet so I don't know if I have questions. Oh, good point. Go home and yeah. practice. I like that. Okay. It's kind of helpful because now I know that I do have a question. Right. Whatever it is. Have you guys ever tried Google Hangouts on your own with other people in the class or for other reasons? I didn't even know Google Plus existed. Oh. <laughs> That's great. Amanda, did you say you tried it yet? No, I accidentally did it one time though. I was trying to join one and I actually joined one with Chloe. Oh. But that, that's pretty funny. And we somehow joined, and I thought it was just like you hadn't joined yet, and then it turns out we had our own going. And oh, okay. I gotcha. We figured it out. But I don't even know how to start one. That was just by accident. Okay. All right. Well, maybe you guys will find it useful later on. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys very much for your input. I will use that. <laughs> Make sure you get some sleep tonight. Mm hmm. Of course. All right. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye. Bye.